have returned from my adventures in Europe. And today, this week, I'm going to tell you all about what a day is like on an Avalon river cruise. So throughout the next few weeks, of course, I will be highlighting different aspects of the trip that I took. But of course, the main portion, the main part that I really want to highlight is this amazing river cruise. Uh, it was a lovely time. I love river cruising and I wanted to show you a little bit about what the day is like. Now this is one day out of the week that we had on board. We were very fortunate. There were no disruptions. The whole week was on board. This is one day. Not every day is going to be scheduled like this, but this gives you kind of an idea of what things are like. So let's get going, let's start. First of all, this day is going to be when we were in Rouen. Uh, Rouen is a lovely city. I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. It was a little bit bigger than some of the other towns that we visited, uh, but it's got some really great architecture and lots of fantastic features uh, that you would really enjoy. We traveled through the night to reach Rouen, so wasn't sure what we'd, you know, see outside our window when we woke up. Uh, waking up that morning, I went to the self-service coffee machine, got us a couple of coffees to enjoy in our cabin, and then opened up the windows. We are right on the edge of the dock. You can see, you know, not a whole bunch of privacy, uh, but we sat and enjoyed our coffee and people watched while everybody went by. Uh, it's a lovely part of town. Like this is, this is really lovely. I love the trees. I love the walkway. But we had to get to breakfast. We couldn't linger very long. We had an excursion later that day. So here we are heading from our room to uh, the panorama dining room. Now I'm, I, yeah, I'm, facing the ground a lot of time. I don't want to intrude on the privacy of some of the other guests on board, but I wanted to show you just how long it takes to get from my cabin, uh, from the cabin that we had into the dining room. And here we are, we're right here. Uh, there are some different setups for table configurations. Uh, this morning we chose a table that had a four by four uh, layout. There's also some two by two, some six, by six, uh, six seater tables and eight seater tables. Now breakfast is a buffet, but as you saw, there was a little menu. There's a couple select items that you can certainly order uh, from your server and they will, they will make it to order. You can have as much or as little as you want. And now where we were seated, we were right butted up against another ship. There was another ship that was docked beside us. We were very fortunate that our view uh, was of the dock and not of the other ship. Here is coming from the dining room, going up to our room. Again, it takes us about a minute. Uh, to get to our cabin. And our cabin was cabin 207. It was a panorama uh, room that you can see. So we woke up to an amazing view every morning. Well, you know, some mornings maybe not as amazing, but for the most part it was. We went back to our room to get ready for our excursion, going up uh, to the reception area and heading out. It was a little cooler that day, you know, we had our jackets on, but I wanted to show you this because this shows you how easy it is to disembark. And just like that, we're off the ship. That's it. Uh, now, there was a, a key card where I had to swipe off and I did that off screen, but here we are, ready for the day. We had a walking tour of Rouen and here is our guide right beside the ship, ready to take us on our walking tour. There is a group of maybe uh, 20, 25 people uh, from the ship that is going on this walking tour. The guide has a microphone and uh, they speak into the microphone and we all have receivers that we received from Avalon along with a little headset. So even if you aren't right beside uh, the guide, you do hear what they are saying. It only took us about a couple of blocks. Meanwhile, the guide is telling us all about Rouen and look at that coming around the corner to this gorgeous, gorgeous cathedral. Oh, it's just stunning. It's just, 
every time I do that in in Europe, I just blows my mind. It's so beautiful. And look at this quaint little square. Look at all the buildings. Oh, all surrounding it, little cafes and shops. Just lovely. And you can see this beautiful church. The guide was telling us all about the different eras that it was built in and the different styles and some of the history. Here we are walking into the cathedral. So yes, we are going in. The guide is taking us in. It is a guided tour of the cathedral. We're a little bit squished in here. Uh, there was quite a few people getting in uh, to the cathedral and uh, kind of bottlenecking a little bit. So it's a bit crowded. Uh, again, trying to get above the crowd so that I don't see the people. But here is the cathedral. Now, pretty much every historic site like this has some type of restoration project going almost constantly. So the view uh, isn't, you know, quite as picture perfect as you would imagine. There's that netting up above, there's scaffolding, but there's, they have to, there's restoration work going on all the time uh, to preserve these monumental historic buildings uh, for generations to come. Now the guide is going through with the group and telling different aspects of the history. There's so much information uh, that they're relaying to you. It can be at times a little bit of an information overload because there's so much, so much history, uh, so much going on. Uh, different parts of the church were built at different times. Uh, so sometimes what I like to do is I just go off on my own to enjoy the cathedral and enjoy the beauty of it. This video is a little bit sped up as I'm walking through just to give you an idea of what the church is like and the different things that you can see, but I still have that earpiece in so that I'm still listening to the guide as I'm walking around. The range is pretty decent, but of course inside the cathedral, it's, you know, rock and limestone, uh, and it's a rather large area. So, you know, sometimes it'll cut in and out. But look, oh, look at this, just gorgeous. I'll just leave you here uh, to enjoy the sights for a little bit. the church you're struck by this how beautiful this little street is and how beautiful the city is with all these half timber houses it's just it's just lovely to just walk and take it all in and we're just outside the church and coming around you'll see this beautiful little green spot France is filled with lots of these green spots and, and now the guide is still talking in the background. I'm still listening on my headset, but just to find a quiet little beautiful spot, it's just lovely. Uh, and these are public areas, of course, and this beautiful church. You can just take in the sights. Oh, I just love it. Afterwards, the guide uh, continued walking through it. Uh, and we came upon the astronomical clock. Now this is, of course, one of the main sites. It's a marvelous piece of engineering. Lots of history, lots of details. 
uh, and it is certainly a must see. As it is, oh <laughs> yeah, look at the little flower shelf. Ah, I love it. I love it. You'll see them dotter around all the different shops. Uh, you know, you'll come across a flower shop, and you just gotta stop and look at all the flowers. Um. Anyways, uh, yes, this is one of the spots to see in Rouen. It is a narrow street, and it is a bit of a holiday time for the local. Uh, French people. So as a result, this was a very, very busy street. It was packed. It is a beautiful clock. So yes, we sat here for a bit, or not sat here, but stood here for a while and looked at all the detail and the guy told us about everything. Finally, at the last part of our tour, we came to the main square. Now this is the main square where Joan of Arc was martyred. And it really is amazing to think of all the history and we, things that we know, like this happened exactly on this spot. But these days, this spot is beautiful. There's a market here in the middle of town with a fishmonger, you know, cheese market, fresh fruits and vegetables, beautiful building. And all around this square, there's different restaurants and, and shops. It really is, it's such a, a beautiful contrast of different things. This is where we had our beautiful meal uh, and we stopped at Le Corion, which I'm probably mispronouncing, but this is the place where Julia Child said she had the best meal in France, and I can see why. This place, it, the amount of history here too, it's been around, it's the oldest restaurant in France, it's been around since 1345. We enjoyed a lovely meal here, one of those lounging meals because after our tour was over, we had free time for the rest of the day. Uh, we enjoyed a four course meal, drank a bottle of wine, enjoyed each other's company, kind of reflected on what we had done that day and the beautiful ambience of this restaurant. And then we walked around and did some shopping. And mid afternoon, you know, we were ready, we were getting tired, went back to our ship. I wanted to show you here again, how easy it is to get back on board. How easy it is. Now, some people say, oh, there's no security. No, there is security. It's just you don't, you don't necessarily see it. So I did again have to swipe in to let uh, the crew know that I was back on board. And here I am walking towards our cabin. I, I wanted to show you this also. Did you notice how I boarded on the sun deck, uh, the top, top deck, as opposed to from the reception lobby where we got off? Rouen is one of the places that is impacted by the tides. So as the day went on, the tide went out, and the ship lowered on the dock. They have to really keep track of what's going on with this. Uh, so our view has changed a little bit. Getting into the room, I'm gonna show you. Now it's all wall. <laughs> so I, really, your view will change all the time. I don't maybe a nice little purchase here. We, you know, we relaxed in our room for a couple hours. Here's, you know, the wall, but there's little flowers growing out of it. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> okay, so 5.30 or so rolls around. We are heading to the Panorama Lounge for happy hour. Oh, maybe with my new purchase. Not very French, but I just saw it and fell in love. It was such a gorgeous day at this point in time that instead of sitting in the lounge, we decided to go outside onto the sun deck. The lounge is, you know, just above the dining room. Uh, so easy to get to, but this is kind of where everybody congregates uh, for happy hour. I'm gonna show you though how easy it is to get outside and get up. There is a door by the front and there's a sitting area uh, just outside the lounge here as well. But we really enjoy uh, going up to the sun deck again, because it was just a glorious day. There are some other, uh, you know, ships that are docked. You could see there was one ship that was right beside ours still. And then, yeah, we headed up uh, to the sun deck to enjoy the sun and the breeze and the views. 
ah, people watch, you know, they're just, it's just right there. Everything's just right there. And it's lovely. I, I love it. Uh, before supper, we did have a presentation on the D-Day Normandy beaches uh, because that tomorrow was going to be our excursion to see Normandy and see the beaches. So we had that presentation and immediately after the presentation, the dining room opened. You do not need to go to the dining room right away as soon as it opens. You are welcome uh, to enjoy your drinks. They have a lighter uh, self-serve food option for supper, the little bistro that's served in the Panorama Lounge if you don't want to go to the dining room, but most people do go to the dining room. We were so full from our lunch that we admittedly didn't eat very much and I don't have any video of our supper, uh, but it was lovely. At, during supper, what happened is our ships that were docked on the same dock actually switched places so that we could prepare to leave uh, when, in, during the night uh, to our next port of call. Now, after supper, we were pretty tired and we were just, you know, heading uh, to bed, but we wanted to refill our waters. So that's at the club lounge. They have a self-serve refillable water station. So I wanted to show you a little bit about how long it takes to get to the end of the ship. And that's an area I haven't showed you yet. So going down the hallway, uh, we really had a lovely day. It was really, I, I do love these days where we stay in port a little bit longer. Uh, I find you get to be relaxed a bit longer uh, and you, you're not as worried about times and schedules and things like that. It's a bit more of a relaxed pace those days. So of course, yes, depending on where your cabin is, you may have a bit of a longer walk to get to the different areas than what we did. Uh, I found it was very convenient being closer to the front of the ship uh, as opposed to the rear of the ship. Uh, so that's where I picked our cabin. And here we are approaching the club lounge. This is a really lovely area. It, as I mentioned, it has a self-serve water station. Uh, so you can get still or sparkling water, you can get it regular water, or you can get it flavored water. I did not bring a water bottle. I forgot. I didn't even think about it, but they have no plastic bottles on board. So if you don't have a water bottle, you can get one from the Avalon staff. Now I had to refill it a couple times because it just gives you a small amount. Yeah. Also here is the self-serve coffee station, as well as some cookies. If you're feeling snackish, sometimes they have some other different pastries here, tea station, all sorts of things. And then you can go out to the very rear of that and enjoy the beautiful views. This is also uh, the smoking section. So if you are a smoker, uh, this is where you would go. But it, look at that, golden hour. Way to take in the sunset. Ah, oh, just lovely. Love it. And that was kind of the end of our day. We went to bed and woke up the next day refreshed for our excursion to the Normandy D-Day beaches, which was a very long and solemn day. Worthwhile for sure, but long and solemn. With that being said, I, this is a day on board. This gives you kind of a snippet of, of what happens, what your day is like, what it's like to get around on board. Uh, again, this is a bit of a smaller ship. Uh, so it's not as big as some of the other ships on, on the rivers. Some of them are much longer. This was the Avalon Tapestry. And uh, you can have maybe 100 and, I believe it's 130 guests on board. I could be mistaken on that. It could be 120. Uh, and I don't believe that all of the cabins were full. There certainly were some tables uh, when everybody was on board for, for dining uh, that were empty. So you could kind of tell that maybe there was one or two cabins that weren't filled. But for the most part, it, you know, it was a full ship. But it wasn't as big as some of the other ships uh, that can go up to uh, like 160 to 180 guests on board. I prefer the smaller ship. I do like it. It's a bit more intimate. You get to meet a, a few more people uh, and, and get to know one another a little bit better. It's a lot also easier to get around, as you can see. Very easy to get around. 
this is my presentation of a day on Avalon and what it's like. I hope you've enjoyed. Certainly post any questions below and when you're ready to start planning your adventure on the river, don't hesitate to reach out. This is Alicia with Evening Star Travel. You have a great day.